Why? Why this hive? I've traveled to two ends of the world and I've spoken to beekeepers to understand how they do their beekeeping and the tools that they use. And one thing stood out for me, and that's the use of the Langstroth beehive. It is clearly the most popular hive in the world, as far as I could establish, and it got me thinking, why? I'm a beekeeper in the high folds of South Africa, working with the Apis mellifera scutellata, also known as the African honeybee. Not too long ago, I visited a beekeeper in Spain at the Bellas de la Valle, about 170 kilometers west of Madrid, where I got to see an amazing presentation on beekeeping in the region and saw how they were using the Landstroth beehive. And then, more recently, I went to the Wingwo Bee Farm north of Hong Kong and got to see their bee yard, which was lined with a few hundred Langstroth hives. And this got me thinking, why is the Langstroth the most popular hive in the world? My research showed that India has the largest number of bee hives in the world, totaling around 12.6 million, followed by China, which is at about 9.4 million. This is no surprise given the size of their population. While the exact breakdown by hive type is not actually known, the Langstroth hive is recorded as the most common style in use today and a firm favorite for all new beekeepers. So what makes it the hive of choice? Simply put, it's the bee space, discovered by Reverend Lorenzo Langstroth in 1851. For Langstroth's invention, beekeeping methods were primitive and inefficient. Bees were typically housed in skeps, these kinds of conical straw baskets, or gums, which were hollowed out logs. These methods were problematic because they required the beekeeper to physically cut the honeycomb from the hive, making it difficult to inspect the brood for diseases or other issues. Langstroth's breakthrough came from his discovery of the gap between 6.4 and 9.5 millimeters, that's a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch, in which bees would not build honeycomb or fill with propolis. By understanding the bee space, it allowed him to design a hive where the frames could be easily removed without disturbing the bees or breaking the nest. Like with most things, in time they evolve, and so what we get to work with today is possibly the most effective bee hive for both the bees and the beekeeper. A couple of key points that make the Langstroth hive so popular are removable frames. The frames which bees build their combs on can be easily separated from the hive walls, floor and other frames. This allows for regular inspections and honey harvesting without disturbing the bees. Number two is standardization. The Langstroth hive and Hoffman frame are standardized, making it easier for beekeepers to share knowledge and equipment between their own setups and each other. This is huge in how you progress with the expansion of your bee yard. The third point is it aids in honey production. The hive design allows bees to fill old combs like these with new honey, saving the honey bees from rebuilding the comb each time, increasing overall honey production. It's important to note that I've only ever used the Langstroth hive, and so I can only really comment on the advantages of this hive compared to others. But if you've used other hives and you'd like to comment below, please share with my community the benefits and the advantages you've experienced with a different hive, as well as um, any disadvantages and ones that you would not recommend. In South Africa, we've been fortunate enough that we can keep the hive really, really simple. So in the Northern Hemisphere, my friends might have a few extra bits and bobs, but we don't have the same pests to deal with like you do. Our bees deal with the varroa mites, so we don't have to do treatments for varroa. So we're very, very fortunate. I'm gonna share with you how I set up my Langstroth hives, but please feel free to comment below and tell us any differences that you have with your hives, we can all learn from each other. Currently, all of my hives and my apiaries are static hives, I don't move them around. So I use cinder blocks as my base, and I like to use cinder blocks because they're cheap, they don't weather, and there's no maintenance. Um, they also don't stick out further than the hive. I find sometimes pallets and things like that stick out further. This is a nice height. Could put a third one here sometimes to make it a little bit higher, but if we double up on supers, this is a nice height, and um, the cinder blocks are easy to implement, quick and sturdy. If the water level had to rise, the water can run underneath and the bricks don't weather. And the hive just seems to fit perfectly on these bricks. Um, it's almost like they were made for each other. Some tips on location for you. If you're able to have your hives on concrete or plastic sheet covered with gravel, you tend to get less hive beetles because they pupate in the dirt below the hive. So the less dirt means less opportunity for them to reproduce. Also on the high faults in South Africa, we are prone to wild bushfires in the winter when everything is very dry. So keep this in mind when selecting your locations. 
I like to have my hives tilted one degree to the front, so any condensation or liquid that happens to find its way into the hive can run out the front. Some hives come with a fixed bottom board. This hive here has a fixed bottom board. You can see by lifting the hive up. And then some hives will come with a loose bottom board. And we tend to get the hives with the loose bottom board with what we call the telescopic lid, which is this lid that goes over the sides of the hive. Whereas the fixed bottom board hives have just a, a slide lid, call it a slide lid because it's and slide on like that. And this hive here is generally used for pollination and if you're moving hives around a lot because you can stack them right next to each other. There's no gap. Whereas if you stack these ones, uh, you would have a space in between and you can put a strap over it tight against the sides and flush against the sides. So these hives are generally used for transportation of bees. Whereas these ones you can use in your static apiaries. And what's nice about these ones is the components are all individually set. So it's quite easy for you then to replace any of these components. So you, you could replace that bottom board as an example. Um, inside here there's an inner lid and the reason that we have an inner lid on a telescopic is because if we didn't the bees would propolis this lid to this box and then it would be very very difficult to get your half tool underneath here to take this lid off. So we have an inner lid where we can put the half tool under here, crack it open, remove the inner lid and then the bees would be in there and then the outer lid would go over the top of that. Whereas with the side we, there's no need for an inner lid and it's easy to crack open. Inside the box, we have 10 frames. It's the Hoffman frame. Each frame comes with a wax strip. And uh, that wax strip is the starter strip that gets the bees building onto the frame. Uh, this is fine to begin with, but as you do your maintenance, my recommendation is that you put full wax sheets in on your frames that you replace into your box when you start to remove frames during your maintenance and the queen loves those new wax sheets that they draw brand new comb out you'll find you'll get uh, a full frame of eggs and and brood when you've got nice fresh 100 percent wax sheets in your frames i tend not to use more than one brood box in my apiaries i find if i grow a colony really really big then they're a little bit more aggressive and difficult to work so I stick to a single brood box and then I manage all of my colonies to the single brood box. So, so this is the setup for your hive when, when you just set it down and you've got a small colony of bees inside there. You won't use the super. The super you can go and you can put that in storage. And the reason that I do it like that is this small colony is going to use up energy to regulate the temperature within this 10 frame brood box. And by adding the super you're adding extra space that they have to regulate the temperature. We don't want them wasting that energy and rather be out there foraging and gathering resources to build this colony as strong as possible. Once they reach eight frames of brood, then you can add your super because they're going to need that space anyway to pull the, the honey up from the brood box, put it into the super and make space for the queen so that she can continue to lay in the brood box. I like to keep my beekeeping as natural as possible. So I kind of follow the instincts of the bees and see where they are in the progression of the building of the colony. You may have also received a queen excluder in your first bee I've set up and wondered why I've not spoken about putting that into these hives. And the reason is I don't use excluders. If you want to find out why, I suggest you take a look at this video. You'll learn why I don't use excluders and some other beekeeping mistakes I've made.